How we doing today, boys and girls? It's your boy Iron Wings 3187 coming at you with another knife review. Well, in this case, I think it's more of a four knife review. In this case, I decided I was going to do another special. I've done a Veterans Day special, a rifle caliber cartridge special. Uh, I've done a couple of them, including my Iron Wings uh, story time with Iron Wings series. Today, I decided I was going to do something a bit more unique. I wanted to do a Victorinox special in which I discuss the multi-bladed, multi-tool Swiss Army knives that I own that I haven't discussed already previously. Now, one of these has been in a previous video, my Victorinox Solo Alox video. And with that knife, um, I kind of compared it to this one up here at the front, my Victorinox Pioneer Alox. And this was actually one of the first Victorinoxes I ever bought for myself, if not the first. Um... There was another Swiss Army knife that I owned when I was younger. I think it was made by Wenger or Wagner. Uh, that I that was the company I couldn't remember the name of in my last video. It came to me about a third of the or three quarters of the way through that video, and I just decided to move on. So I owned a Wenger or Wagner uh, standard. I think it was called a Explorer or a Scout pocket knife. And that used to be in my tackle box, along with a cheapy little Colhagen or Colgan multi-tool Leatherman. My grandfather gave me the Swiss Army knife. My dad bought the uh, Leatherman at the Sportsman's Warehouse that was open in our neck of the woods for like a year max. So, in this case, the way this would kind of play out was... When I was in college, I was looking for something that I could carry on a day-to-day -day basis that wasn't intimidating, like the Buck 110 I owned, or a couple of other pocket knives that people just kind of would look oddly at you for. Um, for example, I carried a I carried the Otzi dagger from Condor around my neck for the first two weeks of school, but I got pulled over by Campus PD a couple of times, and they actually pulled out a tape measure to measure my knife blade to make sure it was under the, like, three-inch, two-and-a-half-inch limit, which it almost... it was almost too long, but they just kind of cut me a break multiple times. But that's why I'm not saying they were bad guys for it. I understand, you know, you see some kid walking down the street with a knife on his neck, that's kind of setting off some red flags, even on a regular street, let alone a college campus. So I wanted something that was a little more down-to-earth, a little more under the radar than, like, some of the other knives I had been carrying at that point, especially on a college campus like Humboldt, California, where they regularly let mentally disturbed homeless individuals sleep on the campus, set up camp in the parking lot in their vehicles. So... There are, are a lot of reasons you'd want to carry something like this. There's a lot of women on Humboldt's campus that used to carry pepper spray canisters, even though it was explicitly against campus bylaws. And because of that, I went out and looked at reviews, and I found I like this... Uh, let me unfold some of the tools here. I like this Victorinox Alox Pioneer because it came with a lot of different things that I wanted or needed at the time. I wanted a sp uh, decent clip point blade or drop point in this uh, case. And I just kind of looked at this and thought it was a neat design. I never really used the awl all that much. Um, it was handy for... I think I used it a couple of times when I did whittling up at Humboldt for carving holes in wood. You know, if I was... Actually, yeah, that's right. For one year, I made my mother a, I want to say it was a sand dollar Christmas tree ornament out of fishing line sand dollars, and I used that all to drill holes in the sand dollars for the ribbon I used to connect it. So I did use the all a little bit in woodworking and crafting because I had a lot of free time at Humboldt off of my job and out of classes. I also wanted something that I could carry with me when I was driving, and it would have a couple of screwdrivers, because at the time I was driving a PT Cruiser Turbo uh, 2003 model, I want to say, that was notoriously 
finicky with its coolant hoses and all these other issues that it had. So I wanted something that I could just pull out, tighten down some screws on hoses if need be, or I could do some minor engine work whenever the time be. Because I didn't have a whole lot of tools available to me up at Humboldt. Um, so this just kind of got me started down the road of what I wanted out of a pocket knife there. And it started me on this road of what I wanted from Victorinox. Um, I love this A-Lock style design because I love the look of the silver. I love the feel of the grid in your hand. And it really does help retain the knife to me. So that's kind of what got me started. And as I said, it's kind of based on the original Swiss Army knife design where it had a can opener, a screwdriver, an awl, and a blade. And I think that was about it. Um... Next up, I think the next one I purchased was this one. I believe, if I remember, this is a Victorinox Scout blade or a Cadet blade. And what this is, is a single smaller blade than the Victorinox Pioneer. A spare pin blade, a, a very tiny one, almost like a scalpel blade. And similarly, the can opener and the screwdriver. So this was the next Swiss Army knife I purchased just because I wanted something to carry on my keychain. The other one I was looking at was a bit too small, and it was the Victorinox Bantam, which is just these two blades on each side. I decided this one because I thought it would be a bit closer in size to the Pioneer. But as you can see here, it is quite a bit smaller than the Pioneer. Um, it worked on the keychain, but it was just a little bit too small for my taste. And it's kind of fallen to the wayside. For the longest time, I kept this in my desk drawer at work just so I could sharpen pencils or open my letters. And it just kind of took that niche spot of something I don't carry every day, but at the same time, something I don't really use all that often. So right now, it's just kind of sitting in my knife drawer collecting dust, not doing anything because... It's too small to really be used or usable for me, especially with my big freaking meaty paws, my gorilla hands. But at the same time, it's too big to really be a proper keychain knife, something that isn't obstructive, something that's able to be used easily. So this kind of just fell to the wayside and it hasn't seen a whole lot of use in recent times. Uh, I think the most I use it for now when I'm at home is this is kind of my go-to box opening knife because I have a lot of case knives that I used to use for box opening. But I decided I kind of wanted to preserve those and keep them for myself uh, to pass down to my grandkids because they're a bit more collectible than these Victorinoxes. So the next knife up, I think this is actually the Explorer model. Um, I'm not too sure. And this was actually the first... This is the second Victorinox I owned. This exact knife wasn't the one. That one's long gone, unfortunately. Um, but what happened is my girlfriend and fiancé at the time would go out to a local dry lake because her family believed they had a claim on an acre or two of land out there. And the family history went that the relative that bought the land and left it to her went out and sunk a brass land marker with their name inscribed in it into the dead middle of the land they owned, or on the edge of the property, a property marker. And one day they were out on this local dry lake bed, and my ex-girlfriend at the time, well, now, found a knife very much like this, missing the, uh, well, no. She ha said it had the scales on it that were blue, had the Boy Scout logo and a name carved into the opposite side. And she pulled the scales off thinking I wouldn't like them. So for the longest time I had one of these where it was just a bare knife that had no scales on it. And I kind of carried that as a glove box knife, something that I had in my truck at the time. And I have no clue why. I just kind of carried it. I think it was because my fiancé at the time pretty much rode or drove with me everywhere I went. And it was just kind of something that she'd look in there and see, oh, you carry it, that's so sweet. Whenever I went into the glove box for a CD or some spare change or something. It's just one of those things, you know. So I got rid of that knife a few years ago because I was a dumbass at the time, sharpened the blade with a Dremel, and basically 
beat the shit out of it for some reason. I can't remember. And I distinctly like this knife from what I remember because I thought it was fairly unique. I like the fact that it had not only the two pin blades here, but it also had your scissors for cutting threads, whatever you needed them for, your Phillips head screwdriver, magnifying glass, and a couple of more flathead screwdrivers in your can opener. It also had on the back another awl, a... I think this is a hook remover for when you're fishing, but I'm not 100% sure. That's what I've always seen it used for, is removing hooks from a fish's mouth. And, of course, your ever-present uh, corkscrew. So, because I threw that one away, I always like this design, even if it's not exactly my favorite knife because of the memories associated with it with my ex. Um, like I've said in previous videos, I think this is going to actually be another story time with Iron Wings video I upload for you guys. Um, I don't really bear any ill will with my ex, but it's not a time I really kind of enjoy looking back on because of the fighting and constant struggles. So I always liked this design despite the negative kind of memories associated with it, so I went and bought another one. And yeah, this hasn't really seen a whole lot of use. This I still carry in the glove box of my car just because it's decent so you can sit in there and, you know, pull out this magnifying glass and read fine details on a map with it. Because I'm one of those guys that I still carry a uh, map of an area whenever I drive through, I'll stop at a gas station and pick one up. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of why I carry it in my glove box. I really do like this knife and I think it's just something that's really handy. Especially, it's not something that you can use when you're camping a whole lot due to it being so packed full of tools. But it is a bit handier than your average Swiss Army knife because you can use the magnifying glass to start a fire. Um, your flathead is just usable for almost any other... It's just nice to have this nice assortment of tools. So, yeah. That's the next Swiss Army knife I bought. And this is actually the most recent and final one I bought as of now. This is the Victorinox Outdoorsman, I think is what it's called, or Sportsman. I can't remember the proper name for it. Um, this is actually very reminiscent of the very first Swiss Army knife I ever got from my grandfather. In that it kind of, it has the exact same tool set, but like I said, his was a Wagner. Um, it has the saw blade, it has the two pin knives, it's basically the exact same setup as the last one, with the only difference being instead of a magnifying glass, it has the saw blade in its place. So, this is a bit more functional when you go out camping. The saw blade, you're only going to really be getting stuff like kindling with it. You're not going to sit there and cut down a tree. But this is kind of more of the regular outdoorsman's knife. You know, something that you can carry on a vest if you're out fishing, and you're not going to notice it's there, really, because of the excess weight. So, out of these, let's say, actually, yeah, let's throw in the Solo in there, too. Out of these five Victorinox blades that I own, which one of them would I recommend you buy? So, let's go in the order of which ones I recommend you purchase the least. So, I'd probably put that as the Explorer, Outdoorsman, or Sportsman, whatever it's called. Because, while the saw is a nice addition, practically speaking, it's not really all that much more important over, you know, carrying something like a gator saw in your spare tool kit. You know, a folding saw is much more practical than that tiny little blade because with that you can actually tackle some serious timber, you know, make yourself a shelter, cut down some serious logs for firewood, whatever. Next, next one I'd probably remove is the, I think this is the Cadet. To me, it's just a little too small to be practical. It's a little too delicate of a blade. It's a little too thin, easily snapped. So that's probably the one I'd recommend you buy next, the least. So forth. Um, I'd probably have to go with the Outdoorsman. I can't remember the, these two names. Um, I think this is the Explorer model, actually. Because, while it is a bit handy with the magnifying glass and the other features, 
it's still just a little much if you want just something that you can carry. You know, it's nice to have a pair of scissors or a Phillips head screwdriver, but I don't know. Just to me, as much as I love this knife, it's a little much for something that you just want to carry with you on a camping expedition. So as much as I love those three, eh, I would recommend you could buy them if you're a collector, but they're a little bit on the impractical side compared to these two. So the Solo or the Pioneer, which one would I recommend you buy more? So this really does come down to taste and purpose. I've stated before that the Solo is the perfect knife for you to use if you're looking for something that's under the radar you can carry with you and you can just pull it out no one's gonna turn around and look at you odd for carrying it the pioneer is a bit more tool intensive but they aren't really anything super tactical or some anything super wide and crazy that people are going to look at it like it's unique it's a screwdriver, a bottle opener, a can opener, and a awl with a knife. So that's what I'm saying for it's, it's kind of dependent on the purpose. Are you looking for something that just serves as a pocket knife? In that case, of course, I'm going to say the Solo. If you're looking for something that gives you a little bit wider variety, something that you can just carry in your pocket and have a couple of screwdrivers ready, or, you know, the ability to put an extra notch in your belt because you lost weight, yeah, I'd go with the Pioneer. So... Thinking about it for a bit, debating, I'd probably say go with the Victorinox Alox Pioneer. I really do think it is about the most practical design you're going to get for a Victorinox blade. It's the most reliable. It's got a good th uh, thicker stocked steel blade. Um, it's got some decent tools on it, but not so much that it's going to create a massive bulge in your pocket like the um, outdoorsman or the explorer. So, with that, this is kind of my story time with Iron Wings replacement for my old solo Alox video. Hopefully, it's a little more in focus. Sorry, I've got heartburn again. So, that's the history of the Victorinox pocket knives I've purchased. Going from the original one, this Victorinox Alox Pioneer all the way down to my most recent being that Explorer model knife, or the Sportsman, one of the two. Would I recommend you buy any of these knives? Of course. For Victorinox's price points, they give you a very decent quality product. The build quality is second to none. And that's always kind of been the Swiss way when it comes to almost anything. They don't do anything by half measures, and everything they build is almost this exact match grade quality. Their ammunition that was given to infantry for their rifles, their rifles, pocket knives, almost anything they make is a fantastic build quality, especially for the price you pay. So would I recommend you pick up any of these five knives? Absolutely. I think you're not going to regret any of these purchases. And it's a great little hobby to get you started on because Victorinox is always coming out with new designs, new tools, and there are certain goals, like gems, that you're going to be hunting for for the rest of your life. Like, I think the Hercules or Goliath, which is like every tool Victorinox has ever come up with in a single knife design that's like that wide. So, with that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Go ahead and pick up something. If you're going to start with a Victorinox, though, start out with a Victorinox Pioneer Alox. I think you won't regret the purchase. So... This has been Iron Wings 3187, signing off.